Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Tristan Merrick here, the Digital Storyteller, and I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Cinecut, where we'll be talking about how to turn your A7 Mark IV into a webcam. Let me see this here. Can you see me? Can you see me? Hello? Hello? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> So somebody said this to me when the pandemic started a long time ago, and they said, simply put, nobody really goes into board meetings anymore, Tristan. Nobody, you know, puts on a three-piece suit and all this cologne and ties and bow ties and all this other stuff. Your new three-piece suit, your new uh, way of presenting yourself in the best light is having an amazing looking image going into a Zoom meeting. And, and that was really, really intriguing to me. Uh, maybe you're wondering why you would want to use your A7 Mark IV as a webcam. I mean, why don't you just buy a $100 webcam from, I don't know, Best Buy or wherever else, Future Shop. I don't even know if Future Shop is around anymore. Anyways, I digress. And I would say to you, well, why would you want to spend an extra $100 when you have a camera that can do this in literally five minutes? Let's go, woo! You can set up this camera to be everything you need it to be, including a web camera. Not only do mirrorless cameras like the A7 Mark IV allow you to look good in virtual settings, but it also allows you to be hands off in terms of auto focusing. You don't have to manual focus with this camera. It'll focus everything for you right off the bat. And it's going to be great in situations where you don't have great lighting. You can just open up the aperture a little bit more and you will still get really great lighting, really great image quality, and pretty decent sound. The other reason why using a mirrorless camera is really, really dope is because you have the option of switching out lenses depending on what situation you're in. Again, because it's fully manual or it's a little bit more of a prosumer level camera that you already have, then it allows you to utilize all of those prosumer options. Now, one of the other features that many people may not think about when they think about a web camera is being able to monitor yourself. And the fact that this has a flip out screen and you can use this flip out screen and actually see yourself and see how you look without having, go, having to go to the back of the camera to see yourself or to see monitoring on a, another laptop or another monitor, it makes it even more uh, advantageous to use a camera like this, especially if you already own it as your main web camera. And then the last reason is really, really practical. Uh, I don't have to buy another camera. I have a camera already and it allows me to shoot, film, and I don't have to worry about it. So now that we've gone through all the benefits, let's talk about how you set up your A7 Mark IV as a web camera. The first thing that you wanna do is you're going to want to make sure that your settings are correct in your camera. So under the setup menu tab, which is the last tab at the bottom of your menu options, you wanna go down to the USB options. And you wanna make sure that under USB connection mode, it's selected to select when the camera is connected. Um, the other options, you don't have to touch at all. Everything else is pretty much set up, uh, ready to go. The only other area that I would encourage you to check out is going under shooting options. Now, when you go under shooting options, you wanna go under USB streaming options. Now, under USB streaming options, you can actually tell the camera what quality video you want. Do you wanna shoot in 4K at 15 frames per second? Do you wanna shoot in 1080p at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second? Or do you wanna shoot at 720p in 30 frames per second? It's up to you, you can select whatever you want. What I will say is that 720p will probably give you the best playback and the best streaming uh, performance. So you should probably set, let's select that. And then I would also leave on uh, enable movie recording mode, which means as you're streaming, you can actually film and record to your card as well. Now it's gonna take more processing power as well as probably battery life. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. So the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're using the company cable that came with the A7 Mark IV. So it's a USB type A to USB type B cable. And it's a pretty long cable as you can see here. So then what you wanna do is you wanna take the cable, you wanna take the USB type C and, and plug it into the USB type C port of your camera. And then you wanna take the USB 
type A part of your cable and plug it into your computer or your computer adapter. And by default, it's going to show us these options right here. Live stream, USB streaming, image transfer, MSC, image transfer, MTP, remote shooting, PC, remote. Now, once you have all these options up on your screen, you wanna to go to the live stream USB streaming mode. So you're gonna click on that and it's going to ask you for a disclaimer. I'm gonna just press okay. And now we're in the USB streaming mode option. Now, what you wanna do from there is you wanna open up um, a social media app. So whether it's Facebook or um, Twitter or LinkedIn, some website or some uh, social media platform. So I'm in Facebook right now. I'm going into a, a live um, sort of private group where I do live streaming tests in. It's gonna load here. It's gonna take a moment to load, obviously. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on where it says webcam. What I'm gonna do is instead of clicking on uh, Ecamm, I'm actually going to click on the ILCE, which is 7M4, which stands for my uh, Mark IV, my A7 Mark IV. So when I click on that, it should now flip on. And now I have my live streaming here. And as you can see, it looks fantastic. And I'm gonna go, go open up Ecamm Live. And what I can do is I can start recording what I have. And I can record this, come in a little bit closer. This is pretty trippy here. I can start streaming. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Tristan Barracks here, The Digital Storyteller, and I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Cinecut. I'm gonna be coming over here to my uh, computer. We're gonna be doing some some live editing on Twitch, on Instagram, on Twitter. We're gonna talk about all of these great things that are happening. And at the same time, I wanna take your live questions and do a whole bunch of other stuff, right? You can see how this can become really, really cool uh, really quickly in terms of being able to create some dynamic content. Now with this particular function, one of the things I do wanna stress is the importance of being in either the photography mode or in the uh, filming mode uh, when you are streaming. That's really important. Other than that, these are all the settings and you are good to go. Well, that's it for another episode of Cinecut. I hope that this tutorial helped you. I hope it inspired you. I hope you uh, don't have too much other questions, but if you do, please leave them below, as well as your thoughts, comment below, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, stay focused, stay blessed, and stay creative. Peace.